How's everyone doing this morning? Good. Good. Thank you all for being patient with me as I hobble on up. Not as fast as I used to be these days. <clears throat> yeah, so starting out, I'm going to kind of, kind of, just gonna kind of jump right into the scripture here. So uh, we're going to be starting out here in Matthew 10, uh, starting at verse 29. And the text reads, Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs on your head are numbered. Do not be afraid. You are more value than many sparrows. So the passage here is it is, is real quick breakdown to do a great job of describing the father's love for us. When something is small and seemingly insignificant as a sparrow is to fall to the ground and, and, and die, the Father's aware of it, and he cares. And imagine how much more he cares for every one of us whose hairs are numbered. Now, there's a specific reason I'm, I'm, I'm speaking on this passage this morning. So several weeks ago, I was just sitting here, second class row over here, y'all know what I said, and listening to Pastor Brad listen to his sermon, and I don't remember what was being said or, or, or when, I, when it came to me, but I, I had a, I, I was reminded of something that was told to me on the day of my accident when I was lying on the road, and it's something that stuck with me the whole time, but I just never thought of sharing it with anybody, and I never have, and, but so, I, I had over, I, it was an overwhelming feeling like it was going to be an opportunity that I, and I needed to share it. So that's, that's what I'm doing here. So, so the word, so, so when I was, when I was in my wreck and I was laying there on the road, the words in, like echoed to me and it's like almost audible hearing them. And the words were, little one, do, do not fear, you're worth more than many sparrows. So that was that was a miracle for me. What 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 I experienced that day. <laughs> when I when I was in my wreck, I was thinking about my family. Uh, that was uh, I, I really didn't care about what was going on with me. It was my last thing I was concerned about. I, I, I thought I was going to die, so I was my, I was like, what's going to happen to my family? What's going to happen to my wife and kids? But those words, it was wild. So I, when I, I was and when I was laying there. And, and and I heard that and felt those words. I had the most just unreal feeling of peace just wash over me. And the peace was so much, so much, or so overwhelming and apparent to everybody there that when, when I was in the ambulance on the way to Scenic, the EMTs commented on it. They're like, I don't understand how you're so calm for what you just went through. I don't understand how you're joking around with us. And I just, I, the only thing I could reply is Jesus said, little one, you're of more value than many sparrows. And the point of my message and, the, and why I needed to bring this up really, it's, it's, I think it's very important that everybody is, is aware about really how much, how much your Father in Heaven really loves you. I mean, for one proof of His love is we're all here right now, right? He brought us here to worship, and, and, and all it takes is one, one bad car ride, and, and that could not be the case, right? So that, that's the very first, uh, I guess, evidence of God's love for us. You know, one of my, one verse that, one scripture that really always, always comes to my mind regarding uh, God's love for us is out of Isaiah. He says, he says, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not. I have redeemed you and called you by name. You are mine. I don't know. For me, that that always kind of gives me a give me goosebumps whenever I read it or hear it. It just the, the idea of, of him saying you are mine to, to me, right? It's like I called you by name. Like who, who am I? Who are any of us? But he loves us so much that that much, right? And he sends the, enough to send his son. He sent his own son to die so we could be called his sons and daughters. 
I, I, I personally would never send my son to die for anybody. I'm sorry, I wouldn't. That, but that's how much the Father loves us, right? And that's, that's overwhelming. People give their lives for people. It happens all the time. It really does. Well, if you've been in the military, uh, you probably know somebody that's done that. May have known somebody that's done that. At least. I've never known somebody who would have willingly give up their children for anybody. And I still forgive. Nothing I would, not a thing in the world I would tell my son to go into harm's way for. But that's that's unfathomable love. That's something that I can't wrap my mind around. And I imagine a lot of people have a hard time wrapping it around. <clears throat> but I want to I want to point out that that this overwhelming love, right? It doesn't mean we're not going to experience hard times. So cover to cover throughout the Bible. It's full to the brim of instances where God has tested his people or allowed his people to go through tests and tribulations. And the most extreme example I always bring up is Job. I mean, Job lost everything. And, and so it's like, I bring him up all the time because I like to comment whenever people say something about you know how bad my situation is. I'm like, okay, it could be worse. It could be Job. Because the reality of it is somebody has it worse, has had it worse, absolutely anybody here, right? Certainly than me. And, but Job is a prime example of how you know, the ruler of this world wants to wreak havoc on our lives. And how God will, at times, he'll, he'll, he'll allow it to happen. Part of, a, part of a test for us. God will allow Job to go through certain things, and he'll allow us to go through certain things. And I, I know I know for a fact that there's people in here going through some things. Some, there's some people in here that are experiencing trials and tribulations and tests. And maybe even some people in here where, where the ruler of this world may be trying to wreak havoc on your lives. It, when you're going through these trials and these tests or whatever they may be, I don't know. We'll know one day, but I don't know right now. It, it, it feels overwhelming and unbearable. You just want to lose it. Um, you, you, you feel like you're at the absolute bottom. You feel alone. You try your best to keep everything together, and sometimes you're just fighting off tears every day. And, and so many times you're just looking, where's the answer? I know I've prayed that and said, God, what's going on? What, what's the answer for me? But I promise you, he's there and he's with you. You know, I like to point out is that, because I take this very literally, right? It, it, he has God, we serve God, a God, we have a Father who would send, as Jesus said, legions of angels if his son had asked it. Now, us as sons and daughters, I truly believe he would do the exact same thing for us. In fact, my life is an example. I know he's, he's had several angels working in my life over the past year. Specifically, I mean, throughout the course of my life, who knows how many. But over the past year, uh, I know for a fact. There's no other way some of this stuff would have happened. In Zephaniah 3.17, it reads, The Lord your God is in your midst. The mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The mighty one will save. And I know a lot of people don't agree with me when I say it's about legions of angels that God will send in the day, but I do believe that. I, I, some people don't believe miracles. They don't believe miracles happen today. I believe miracles happen today. I, 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 I tend to believe anything that we see in the Bible a miracle or uh, God working and doing something in someone's life, sending somebody to, to, to lay hands on people and them being healed. I think, like, I truly believe with all my heart that anything that is written in the Bible, like, it, it can happen today. I don't, I don't remember reading anywhere. I know it's a very popular conversation it's that, that miracles were for that time. I don't think they were. I don't remember reading the scripture where it said that miracles ended. Power of work and miracles, the power of laying on of hands. 
And I think I, I think uh, he proved me right specifically in that that event. When I was laying on the road and his words overwhelmed me with peace, that was the first, probably not the first miracle. The first miracle I lived, right? The second miracle was that I think that, that I shouldn't have been at peace then. I don't think anybody could have been at peace without without the Holy Spirit. But he also proved me right with my wife. You know, she took on the whole burden of everything in our house. That was a miracle, right? Everyone who's here who has kids, y'all understand how stressful that can be. Especially we got a little farm going. And our kids are especially rambunctious. They uh <laughs> But, but the Lord strengthened my wife and upheld her, and she was able to take it on while taking care of me. Like, you want to talk about worse than a child? I mean, I, I know I can be that way sometimes, right? But he proved it in other ways, too, you know. I'm going to share this because I want you to know miracles do happen. Like, they really do. You know, when I was on disability for months after my wreck, you know, we were collecting 60% of a paycheck. If you've ever been on short-term disability, you know, it's, it's awful. Um, 60% of a paycheck is a whole paycheck. And, and, you know, you know, it's not very common these days for people to have the kind of paychecks come in where they have a lot of leftover. We, didn't, we never have had a lot of leftover at the end of the paycheck. Now with 60%, we were negative. You know, there's a... If you were to do the math on it, our account would have been grossly negative at all times. Grossly negative. There's, but for some reason, the math didn't math because for some reason, our bills got paid and our accounts were never empty. I mean, we couldn't find it out. There were no deposits. There was no, nothing going on in there that was unusual. So we just quit looking. We were like, you know, we're not even going to look into this. We're going to take it as a blessing. We're just going to stop right there and praise the Lord for it. And that's what we did and that's what we do. You know, and that's a miracle, right? Talk about making something out of nothing. And praise God for that. Every time, every time I think about it, I can't help but praise God. It's, he works miracles today. <laughs> but I want to emphasize that he just doesn't, it's not that it's just a miracle work for me, and I don't want to make this about me. I think, I honestly, I think I know that everybody here, you're going through these, these, these hard times and struggles, and if he's going to work a miracle, he can work miracles. He's willing to. And I, and I believe that he's going to continue to prove me right time in and time out. But sometimes it's, it gets real difficult. Because God has this uh, sense of humor where he likes to wake you way at rock bottom, you know? It always makes it kind of fun, right? Because he wants to see where you're at. So he'll wait on, he'll wait you on rock bottom a lot of times before he works a miracle. You know, I thought I've, I've been at rock bottom a few times in my life. Um, and a few times in my life I was looking for that, that miracle. But little did I know I wasn't at rock bottom. Because my rock bottom is on a pavement down there on center point. <clears throat> and and, and why I, and why why I had to go through that I don't know and I don't it doesn't really matter to me you know but I like to say is, is if it if he saw it fit as part of his will for something to do good anywhere like I don't I don't know what his plan is then then so be it blessed be his name because I don't think there's a amount of personal sacrifice that could be more significant than fulfilling the will of God. And God gave me a unique opportunity with that to talk to a lot of people. And if that, that is it, blessed, then blessed, like I said, blessed be his name. And, and, uh, and I want to encourage that too. It's that if you're going through hard times, it's the hardest thing to think of is, is well, where are you, God? Well, but I think it's important to train our minds to think when we're going through hard times, is blessed be your name because whatever you're going through might be for his will. Because we know God's there for us. He's, he's there with us when we're going through these things. God was with, with my, myself, my wife, my whole family during this awful event, right? Um, passage out of Isaiah 41, 7 verse 10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not discouraged, for 
I am your God, and I will strengthen you. I will help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Skipping on to verse 13, it says, For I, the Lord your God, will hold up your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. See, when I, when I first kind of noticed the scripture, it hit me kind of weird, right? Because when he says, Fear not, I will help you, you know what that really sounds similar to? Sounds really similar to little one, do not fear, do it for the many sparrows. It sounds very similar to what I heard on the road there. And God did exactly what he said he would do in the scripture. It's important to understand when we're going through these rough times is, is we are his sons and daughters. We're not just people who go to church and people who are part of this group who want to have good moral standings or, or whatever people the world thinks of the church nowadays is we are the sons and daughters of the Almighty God. Yes. And God, like any of us here who have children, will do absolutely anything to help his sons and his daughters with what they're going through. You just, you look, it's, it's important to learn to trust his timing, trust his judgment, because I don't always understand why he helps some people some ways and why he helped me so tremendously. I feel like I see some people suffering, and, and then people after, I just feel like I've been overwhelmed with his miracles and blessings. I, I don't understand it, but just trust his timing and trust his judgment. But what rest assured, we will understand it one day. There's no trial and tribulation that comes in this world that doesn't go unjustified in the, in the life to come. You know, sometimes the answer is, is tough. You know, Paul. Paul explains as he asked the Lord to take his his infirmity, whatever it was, away from him. If somebody knows something about infirmities, I wish mine would go away too. But you know what God told Paul was, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is what you need. My faith, my my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And to me that's just such a it's almost something like that, that I take pride in now. It's like, yeah, I've been around here. Yeah, I can't do things like I used to. I can't can hardly carry feet around to feed the chickens. So manage, but hardly. But it's 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 that his strength is made perfect in my weakness. That even though I'm sitting here limping around, I know the Lord still has plans for me and is going to use me powerfully some way or another. And that's true for any of us. All of our weaknesses, whatever they may be, whatever you think your weaknesses are, maybe they're not a weakness, maybe God says that's a strength, because that's how I'm going to use you. I just pray one day everybody here can praise God in, in their, and I know a lot of you do, and I, I pray for everybody that they can praise God in the hard times. It, I do hope nobody here has experienced hard times like that, but the fact of the matter is we will. Some way, shape, or form will be tried in some some way, and everybody will be will be tried in a different way. It's just imperative. It's just important to know how much your father really does love you. And is love great enough to work a multitude of mir miracles? And 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 I, I, I want I and look, I just really hope everybody can hold their head high on that too. It's like for me, like I said, it's just a point of pride. I am a son of the Almighty God. And I'm, I'm just going to close with that. I know I didn't have a lot to say today. I, my message is always pretty short when I'm up here. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like it. Pretty short, I guess. But I didn't have a lot to say. I just, I, there were just a few, few real points that I wanted to get across. And I didn't want to overbear it or make it more than what it is. And I just wanted to say what was on my heart, what I think I put on my heart. And we, as we close today, I'm gonna, I have a, a, a song we're going to play. And it, it's a song that most of y'all will be familiar with it. And I think it's just something that's always hit me really hard, especially in this hard time I've been going through. And I, I want I guess I just, my request to everybody is just, while the song plays, I want, I want everybody if, to, to reflect on the time that you were at rock bottom. And thank your Father for delivering you. And if you're currently at that time and you're going through that rock bottom right now, some of you may be. You can't always tell outside, but, but y'all know. 
you're at the rock bottom right now, take a moment and, and out of faith, praise the Lord for what he's going to do in your life because of what you're going through. Because knowing that with everything God has a plan for you, knowing that with everything that God is going to work his will and work mightily, Some songs just say closer to home. And I want you to have faith. Because if you're going through it, he will rescue you. He'll send out an army.
Thank you, John. And, and, yeah. Amen. God is love, and God loves you. And that God is faithful, and he is faithful to you. That, that God, every word in here is faithful and true. That it hasn't ended. That miracles continue. And, and the greatest miracle of, of all may not seem like it in every instance. Verse 32, Therefore, everyone who will acknowledge me before others, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. That, that of all that God has done for you, of everything that God has done for every single one of us, the greatest miracle of all is that Jesus would speak your name before the Father. And thank you, Jonathan, for reminding us that, uh, that yeah, we all could be Job, <laughs> but by his grace, we are not. <coughs> and, uh, but yeah, as, as we close, that just to, to remember and want to give you an opportunity, if you have not acknowledged Jesus' name before others, the next part of that is, is scary, that he will deny us before his Father in heaven. And so we're going to sing a hymn of invitation. Joyce, if you could make your way up here. And Doug, I'll gladly hand the mic back to you. <laughs> y'all don't need to hear me sing. Um, 316, if y'all would stand with me again. If there's any way I can pray for you, if Jonathan can pray for you. If you haven't acknowledged him in heaven before, would you come and do that today?